Hey, it's Chris. And I have an 1833 Greek Revival house that I've been restoring, and I'm trying to make some hinges for my shutters. I have several broken ones, and I'm missing some. It's an unusually shaped part, and it was made before CAD modeling, so it's got a lot of unique features that are hard to replicate in CAD. So I thought it'd be a great example to try out scanning and then uh, using different approaches to make a 3D print. When the hinge is lifted up, it can move, but as soon as you bring it across, the weight of the hinge drops down and then it locks into place. You can see just ever so lightly that it says AC Palmer Patent 1843. I actually found the patent, but let's get started with the project. I'm going to use my Riverpoint POP2 scanner to do a feature-based scan of this hinge. Because the part is dark, I sprayed it with some Asa Blue to make it show up better. I'm going to use the turntable to scan the part, and I'm going to place the part in three different orientations so I get a complete model. Now I'm going to use Revo Studio to clean up the data and remove the uh, ring, feature ring, from the data set. And I'll do this for each of the three different models to save them back out. Next I'll load one of the models, then I'll line a, load a second one and align it to it. And then finally take a third model and align that to the first two. And then we'll have a complete model. So this is the uh, file that's been merged and uh, after I merged it I went to point and I did um, meshing and then I decided uh, I hadn't selected the uh, fill a hole so then I did it here and I did triangulization and applied it. The first option to print this part is the easiest. It's just to load the STL file directly into your slicer and print it. The downside is that uh, any part or scan defects will appear in your final 3D print and sometimes because of the ratty scan surface you'll get a poor quality 3D print. In this first example I took the uh, 3D scan data of the hinge and I just uh, made sure it had its any holes filled and I imported it directly into the Prusa printer uh, slicer and I'm just going to print it. So all the errors that are there are going to still be there. The second option you can use is to make a NURB uh, solid of the part. And that will allow you to go in and clean up the holes and the post and certain things like that. But the downside is that you need to have a watertight model to make a reasonable nerve surface and the print quality can still be pretty poor. The second approach I tried is I loaded in the scan data and made sure that it was uh, watertight. And then I created a nerve surface from it. So this is now a solid so I can do certain things to it. You can see in this model that the holes are not very good here, here, and on this tab here. And also, this uh, post is not straight. It's bent in a little bit compared to the back edge. So what you can do is that you can go ahead and um, fill the holes in. And then... cut out new holes that are more precise and you can put chamfers on the other side to hide the screw heads. Next, uh, since it's a solid, you can cut off the, the, the pin that was crooked and we'll make a new straight one. Now we've made a new pin that's uh, 
parallel to the back edge and we put a chamfer on here. Next we can fill in this hole on both sides. And finally we can put a new hole in and a, a chamfer on that too. So you can see that we now have some corrected geometry of three holes and chamfers and a new pin. Here's the print of the second approach. It takes quite a bit of support because of the odd shape. My third and final approach is to use scan data and then to sketch and extrude and cut solid geometries. So the, on the pro side is that the data doesn't have to be complete or all that great of quality, but uh, you can create some really good models that can be adjusted for different methods. You can add draft angles if you're going to cast. And also it gives the highest quality 3D print. On the downside, it takes a lot of skill and uh, the software I'm using is pretty expensive and it's extremely time-consuming. So in this, this particular option, I start with the same polygonal model from the scanner. And it took me actually 26 different sketches and a bunch of extrusions and cuts to create the part. I'll just show you the beginning part here. So the first thing I did was sketch out the profile here of the back and extruded it. And then I could do a sketch to cut out the outside edge and then cut cut it. And so now you, if you look at the solid, that's what I have. And then I'm just going to go through a bunch of other steps to complete the project. And that's the final part. Here's the print that used the third approach doing the solid modeling. Well, the support material came off a lot easier on the part that was done with solid ge geometry. And still Fortunately, because of the support, it's still a little rattier on the back than on the top, but the part looks a lot cleaner. Well, I hope show you the pros and cons of these three different approaches to go from 3D scan data to 3D prints is helpful. If it was, please hit like and subscribe and have a great day.